everybody, and you're very welcome to the latest episode of the South Tip Arts Podcast. It's exciting times here at the Arts Centre as we reopened on Monday the 10th of May. And we are delighted here to be able to welcome you into the building safely once again. And what a show we have to reopen on. The archetype of the Kylock is one of the oldest and most powerful associated with Ireland and the Kylock form is part of the great goddess trinity alongside younger incarnations as the maiden and the mother. And Nakailaka is the name chosen by a collective of six visual artists, one jazz musician and a curator and writer. They explore what it means to be women who are getting older and arguably becoming invisible and what strategies they can devise to overcome those negatives. Between them, they share well over 500 years of experience of being women, of being artists, of being a curator, a writer, a historian, as well as a composer. They want to make art that allows them to explore their collective experience, their attitudes to ageing, to their bodies, to their place in the art world and how they relate to a different culture and heritage. Central to the developmental opportunity in this phase of their careers is the notion of working collaboratively, enabling them to do what women have always done, mentored and supported and argued with each other so that they can share the fruits of this time with other people during 2021. They spent the month of September 2020 between lockdowns at the Ballinglen Arts Centre in County Mayo, living and working together. During this month-long residency, they have come up with a huge body of work, some of which is on display here at South Debury Arts Centre. Nikailaka are Helen Comerford, Maria Leving, Carol Nelson, Terry Rudin, Patricia Hurl, Barbara Freeman, Gerda Teldur and Catherine Marshall, I was delighted to be able to catch up with some of the group during the installation of their work here at the Arts Centre to ask them about their experiences of Ballinglen and their hopes going forward for the Kylica project and what they hope to be able to achieve with this work. In this instalment, we will hear from Terry Rudden, who is a Swiss artist based here in Tipperary, who has made a documentary capturing the various processes of the different women and their experiences during their month in Ballinglen. The documentary itself will be shown here on the 29th of May as part of a day-long online symposium, which will be streamed live via our website and our YouTube channel. So don't forget to have a look out for the details of that, which will be coming up very soon. And we'll also hear from Maria Leving, who is a painter, landscape painter, and has some beautiful plein air paintings in the gallery here from her time in Ballinglen. We'll also hear from Helen Comerford, a Kilkenny-based painter and educator, and from Gerda Telger, whose huge line drawings grace the walls here at the Art Centre, and they have to be seen to actually be appreciated fully. I hope you enjoy. Terry, it's brilliant to have you here at South Debray Arts Centre. Yeah. I'm saying this to all the ladies because yeah, I'll actually, tell you what, it's just so amazing to have actual real people in the building and yeah. to be able to conduct a real interview with a real person <laughs> yeah. as opposed to doing it on over Zoom, which I've been yeah. doing for yeah. the last year and a half. So this is brilliant. You are the filmmaker of the group. Nicole yes, Lecker. I am. Yes. You've made a documentary specifically. Yes, it, it's something I was always interested in. I've made a couple of documentary and a couple of video performance art uh, pieces. But when we came together in Akalika, I thought it would be interesting to follow the process yeah. of, of those artists. And mainly because they were older artists and because we were between 70 and 83, I felt it'd be interesting to make a documentary out of it, uh, see their processes and how they think and how, how they feel now after having done art for their life yeah. but had families and all things and now yeah. this has fallen away and they can concentrate on, on art, art so again. Yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> I think great for people to hear especially maybe yeah. younger people you know younger women practicing artists who yeah. maybe have families who find it really 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 hard to do yeah. any yeah. of their own work with yeah. between all the external stuff that's going yeah. on so it's yeah. brilliant to hear about people actually reclaiming their work yeah. lives for yeah. themselves after their yeah. families are yeah. grown up. The film is started 
because we we decided originally we should have gone to Cyprus outside of Ireland, yes, yeah. but then COVID happened yeah. and isolation happened, and we said, well, we can't go to Cyprus, so that's out. Mm. And maybe after the mm. lockdown, the first lockdown, mm. maybe we could go to Ballinglen, mm. and we we rode off to Ballinglen and. They said yes. <laughs> they take the aid artist, and uh, yeah. we I kind of travelled to Ballinglen for four weeks. Yeah, and there is where the story do- starts with the yeah. documentary. Yeah, looking at the first week, to see how we settled, and because we did know each other, because we know the work of each other, yeah. but didn't know each other. But it's very different people and different yeah. characters, yeah. different artists, different yeah. styles yeah. of work and different ways of working. Yeah. Exactly. How is that going to work? Yeah, yeah and yeah. then also having um, a curator and a writer with yeah. us, and to have a jazz musician as well. Fantastic, yeah. And I felt that very interesting to look at this and yeah. to document that. So it is the documentary really is about Paul and Glenn, how mm. we started to fit together, how we started to do the different work and mm. the, the documentary shows how different we, we mm. are uh, and it shows the kind of isolation they went through, also the invisibility, obviously. Yeah, and yeah. suddenly we had some things together and, and we felt much stronger. Do you know what? Uh, there's a real work. power to the group, isn't there? Or yeah, like a, sort of yeah. a strength. And there's strength in numbers, as they say. So Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. But the documentary is maybe the most what it shows in Berlin Glen is the process, how they started to work. And uh, mm. we have some wonderful close-up to see how, how physically yeah. uh, the work is. Yeah. I actually followed each artist to their own studio and I have enormous footage <laughs> but yeah. I think uh, we can't integrate now into the documentary because I think the bone of the documentary is Paul and Glenn yeah. and the working together and how we feel together and how we work together yeah. but I think in the end I have a documentary sitting there <laughs> okay, wow, so because yeah. I have so much individual footage yeah. uh, because I visited each studio and we looked at each artist's work yeah. and their process and what we did is we didn't use uh, say Catherine who is our curator and writer to interview them all we actually had conversations so okay. different artists would conversate so oh, Helen really? and Gerda would talk about their work yeah. and uh, how they feel and how yeah. their process is yeah. and that I think that's why I think we have a documentary. Yeah, like event. I'm thinking if you have that much material, yeah. I mean, the editing process is painful enough at the best of times. Yeah. But when yeah. you find yourself with hours and hours and hours yeah. of footage, yes. how difficult was that to get it down to just yeah. you know, yeah. one yeah. film? Yeah, I think so. It's an interesting document in mm. the end to see mm. how each artist is working. And uh, we have... Uh, quite a bit. I mean, the jazz musician uh, is from Britain. Yeah. Okay. Then we have Gerda, who is from Holland. Yeah. Then we have myself, who is from Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah. So we have also some foreign artists who have been settling and in Ireland for the last thirty years or so. So she yes. got her Italian connections. And yeah. yeah. There's a real good yeah. spread of yeah. experience and um, world view, I suppose. Yeah. Why are you, I suppose, hoping that Nikolaika brings to the wider art community or helps you to vocalize or yeah, you know, yeah. express. I think that that's the that was the aim of it. I think there is something interesting we discovered is that we feel there is support out there, but not major support yeah. for older artists. Mm-hmm. And one idea we have to get a, a housing estate for artists. Ooh, yes, yeah. where where we it doesn't matter if it's a writer or a visual artist yeah, or yeah. a musician. But it's that this person may need medical help yeah. or needs overseen yeah. medically, mm. but that person still can do art. So they'll yeah. be sharing studios 
sharing discussions, but living in still a, independently, in a community, but together kind of, in a community. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's our most aim to 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 see could we get funding for this? That could would we be absolutely establish yeah. some things yeah. like this in in yeah. Ireland and see yeah. could that be possible mm. uh, to find? I think we all live. Quite isolated because yeah. we're all living in different areas. You know, everybody has said that, and I think as a, you know, as artists, it's kind of it's a bit of your natural habitat is kind of to be yeah. a little bit of a loner, maybe yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Or I think a lot of people would say that, or just to be a bit more introverted, maybe, yeah. or yeah. happy yeah. in your own company or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it is important to find outlets it, to. It is because I think most of us were teaching or had some kind of employment all mm. and then you're 65 yeah. and it's all over <laughs> okay yeah, and you're like oh, <laughs> my work you know and, yeah. and your friends are further away yeah, and, yeah. and so yes it's losing yeah that idea and i mm. i think so it's also difficult to apply for funding yeah. you know as older you get i think there is that aim of viewing younger artists and i can understand that I suppose, of course yeah. you want to support the fresh yeah I think we have the same right. Absolutely, okay. yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So I think this is why the group wants that dynamic. Yeah, yes, yeah. and it's visibly since we are together, since we came back from Balen Glen, there is interest out there on the, in us. What yeah. surprises us? It's brilliant. And actually. it's maybe because yeah. we are a group. I think it probably is yeah. because it's that like it's that sort of strength that it like you're stronger together you know this yeah. I know they're all kind of jingoistic kind of slogans or whatever but like yeah. they're true they're yeah. they're slogans because they're yeah. true yeah so yeah. yeah it's um just your voice gets louder when there's more yes. of you because yeah. you can't be ignored yeah that's perhaps. right yeah yeah um yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing the film. I know it's been shown as part of the wider Bialtana Festival. Yes, yeah, it Already. is. Lucky enough, uh, I'm happy about that. It'll be screened three times. I think Mayo will have a screaming because of the Ballangen mm. Art Centre. And it'll be a free screening so yeah. you can get tickets. Then Bialtana will have a screening with the symposium. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there will be the screening and then a discussion afterwards yeah. with uh, Katrin, myself, and uh, Katrin Humphrey, I think she is the head of yeah. uh, film festival. Uh, and then we, we will have uh, the last day of Bielten and they will yeah. screen the film again. So yeah. it's we're lucky that it's been screening so many times, the yeah. opportunity to see the film. It's been really good to talk to you. I'm going to let you go now. Best of luck with the film. And like, I really hope you do get to make your eight documentaries yeah. because um, yeah. I think it'd be fascinating to watch. Yeah. I yeah. can't even imagine the job you had editing that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing you know, how yeah. you did it and yeah, what the finished yeah. piece looks yeah. like. So yeah. Best of luck and uh, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you too. So, uh, Maria, it's fantastic to have you here at South Tipperary Art Centre. You are a part of the collective of Nikhailaka. Speaking to each of you about yes. um, how you found the experience, first of all, I imagine, personally, in terms of if it was me, I, I think having such a project to work on in this very unusual year must have been a great focus for, you know, for work and it's fantastic because I have always wor- worked in pretty much splendid isolation yeah. in the past. And uh, then this opportunity to come and be part of a group of women all with a lot of years of experience behind them. It's a win-win situation because I think you engage with people and you play off one another and and, and somebody says something and you think, ah, ping, I haven't I thought of that. And, and it's been a great looking back in on oneself again mm. and, and what you do. And uh, because we were going up to the Ballon Glen mm. Arts Foundation in Northwest Mayo, mm. which I actually know and have been to before previously because I was fortunate enough to be awarded a fellowship there. Mm. And I went back and I thought, what am I going to focus on? And the whole thing, the Calica summed up the sort of old wise woman of the bog, the yeah. one that had the cure, yeah. probably in the little basket that she'd been out 
yeah. gathering between the rocks or out of the yeah. bog. That sort of became my vision. I'm a landscape painter primarily, but I had painted a lot up there and the sky was also, yeah. there's a great sky up there Huge and it's sky. constantly mm-hmm. changing, yeah. you know, and uh, and I tend to work small because I work plein air and then I can bring what work I've done out in the field, so to speak, back to the studio and either in a tiny painting some which will be in this exhibition, mm-hmm. and I'm calling them postcards from Bow and Glen. Okay. And they are just like little snippets I did out on plein air in oil. But before we went, I bought some delicious handmade recycled oh, okay. rag paper. And uh, I live on a farm, and we have a, quite a bit of forestry. And I had, over a few winters, been gathering oak galls in the winter, which can be quite perilous because you're looking up and you don't see that briar that's oh. making through the grass oh. and trips you up. But I had gathered the oak galls and had a thought to make some ink. So this coming to Mayo with Michalica, I went ahead and I made Amazing. the ink. So there are, I think, four little pieces here. Fabulous. Also of oak gall drawings. Well, they're drawing paintings, really. Mm. And they're of the bog, but they're the bog without the landscape. They're the bog with just the cuts. Man-made marks within the bog. Mm. And they were drawn with sharpened oak twigs and painted mm. with feathers I'd found oh, lying okay. in the grass. Yeah. So they're very environmental and organic. I've really enjoyed that. And... When we were there also, it was suggested we all did a print. And I won't gulp. I haven't done a print. <laughs> uh, well, I did a little bit, but, you know, sort of ghastly little liner cut or or a little, what I call a little scratchy one, a little, uh, <laughs> uh, it, uh, you know, dry point. Mm. So I took one of the oak gall ink drawings that I did as a sort of full bog with the landscape. Yeah. And... I turned that with the help of the amazing Susanna O'Reilly from Parallel Editions into a print that I'm actually really uh-huh. quite pleased with and <laughs> well, proud of, actually. It, it was really enjoyable and it was quite a process to do because we couldn't beat up. I couldn't go to her studio and work. Yeah. So it was all done by on um, post. To, to, very to, lucky that you even got that little block that you well, actually got to go, weren't you? Well, we were very lucky, but Bow and Glen's bad luck that gave us good luck yeah. because they had lost all oh, the... Oh, because it's, oh. they have so many overseas people and because there were nobody travelling, yeah. then we were able to to go and it's just magic there and they've made this wonderful museum which Mm -hmm. everyone should go and see because in this one street village you have this amazing museum it's Mm -hmm. incredible and the coast and the cager fields and all up around Port of Cloy, Carotaig, Bell Derrick, it's beautiful, yeah. you know, it's beautiful and it's wild. wild you can wild. drive for ages and maybe meet one other car. That's my kind of place. <laughs> Absolutely, Gorgeous. you know, yeah. and people sometimes think, oh, this would be scary to me. No. But I don't find it. I find it very embracing. It's there and I feel like I could go back a thousand years <sighs> And I'd be seeing what the person a thousand years ago so, would be. Oh, yeah, now. because really, yeah. I suppose, parts of that landscape haven't really been touched that much. No, so it's very little, yeah, very yeah, little. Yeah. It sounds like being part of the collective maybe changed your process a little bit or made you go a little bit outside of your... It made me, yeah, yeah. yeah. And anything that kicks you out of your comfort Isn't that zone has just got yeah. to be good, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what age you are, you know, age is... Irrelevant. It's yeah. totally irrelevant yeah, to me, yeah. you know, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I get a bit of a shock sometimes when I see what my <laughs> age is. Like, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm not that at all. You know, I'm still waiting to be a grown up. <laughs> I know, um, yeah. yeah. But maybe that's a good way to be. It's know. a good way to be. It's a good yeah, way to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 I certainly don't. See limitations. It's good not to see limitations. No, and, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, but it's great to be here in Clonmel. I, I think I was saying, I think it's 50 years since I was last in really? Clonmel. Wow. I was showing a big horse of my father's oh. in Clonmel show. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah the Clonmel show. Yeah, it's still yeah. on. It's still yeah, on, yeah. It's still on. yeah. I don't think I've ever been to it, but it is quite a big, quite a big day. Yeah, out. yeah. We did yeah. do an awful lot of mileage around the country yeah. hauling this horse yeah. of my father's. Well, yeah. I imagine the place has changed quite a bit since yeah, the last time I, you were here. I, then. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know at Hopefully all. Hopefully for the better. Yeah, but uh, no, I'm a Waterford born girl. Yeah. And I live in Wexford, so. Great. Maria, thanks very much for your time and just to wish you all the best of luck for this show and for everything else going forward. It's been a pleasure. I hope you get lots of people in to the show. I'm very proud to be showing here in it and maybe people hearing a little bit about what's behind the work I've done for this show you know, we'll we'll make a point to sort of look at them then. Um, Yeah, it's been a great, a great experience and it's uh, very exciting to be showing again. It's very exciting. Thanks so much, Maria. Thank you very much. Helen, you are very, very welcome to the Art Centre. It's a a real novelty to us. There's so much activity going on this week. It's brilliant. You're a painter. Yes. Um, and you are a part of this collective of Nakhailaka, whose exhibition is just opened here at South Tiberi Art Centre. A magnificent project and a, a magnificent bunch of women, I have to say. The concept for this came out of a conversation that you would have had as a group at some point. Well, well, actually, I was in Cyprus the summer okay. before last, mm. and there was a great group of MA students from Prague there, Lovely. and and me. Yeah, <laughs> we we all got on great after initial sort of. Um, ages, uh, standoffs, and and then we did, and I got the idea that it would be lovely to come back with a contemporary group of mine yeah. and and have these conversations because they gathered in the kitchen every night and uh, it was just great. So so I set about that, yeah. and that's the idea. It wasn't it wasn't anything else, okay. but as we accumulated each other, <laughs> it became so much more as yeah. things do you know so yeah, that's yeah. that's the genesis really what you all did was you went off for a month to Ballinglen to the retreat there well we were supposed to have gone to Cyprus and of course COVID, COVID yeah, uh, yeah yeah we went there and I think just for myself my energy is limited and so I don't go to openings anymore. I don't. I, I have to conserve energy for the studio. That's yeah, what, that's yeah, what I do. Yeah. And so it was lovely to have conversations that I haven't had for a long time in that context. And I think we all enjoyed that enormously, you know, and lovely sense of community, maybe. Yeah. That sort of immersion in the whole yes. world, like eating together, yes. living together, yes. working together, yes. the whole... I imagine the the bonds that you've developed have are quite strong now. You must have kind they of certainly do. Yeah. And I had fallen and broken my legs, so yeah, there was no question that I wouldn't go. Yeah. But but the amount of caring and support that only women do really yeah. for each yeah. other. Yeah. 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 Uh, was, That's was great. Magnificent. The work that you have with this, we have some large paintings of yours. They were uh, completed in Balling Glen or after the No, yeah. no, this is I I have been for two years working on a very large project. Okay. Uh, that was was due to be exhibited in Kilkenny Festival last year. Okay. And of course COVID happened. And um, and it was great actually because I have been in it since. Mm. And these paintings are sort of there are nineteen paintings. And these ones that are on show here were sort of post the 90. Okay, yeah. Uh, in yeah. a way, so uh, it's like when you build up momentum, you can't just stop. You know? Yeah. And so they they continued. Just keep uh, going. And, and is it, would, yeah. is that series ongoing now? Are you still working on? No, those? no, that's that's the finish that's now. Um, the, the, there's going to be a book. Uh, okay. in conjunction with the show in this year's Kilkenny Festival oh, yeah, uh, in the Old Butler Gallery. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. it's it's due to happen. So hopefully <laughs> COVID will permit it, but it, it looks sort of optimistic now, it's doesn't looking, it? It's looking yeah. good. It's yeah. looking good at the yeah. moment. So yeah, yeah, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. 
I suppose what just popped into my head there was that, you know, when you have all these plans and, and, you know, your diary is filled up with all these things and then something comes along and it all just goes... Man uh, proposes, God disposes. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, I suppose it's fair to say in another way that if, if there had been maybe no COVID, Nicolaica may not have... It would, but it, it would it, have been different. It I would think. have been different, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, yeah. we would have gone to Cyprus yeah. and bonded probably in the same way. But we, we established something with Mayo too that was really special. Yeah. And and we did some workshops and we did a, an online, I don't know what, it was, what you would call it. But I think it focused us not just as artists, but maybe as some sort of movement in relation to older women and yeah. older artists in particular. Yeah. Exactly. I suppose yeah. it's difficult maybe sometimes to affect change on your own, but like mm. there's strength in numbers in that way that when you all come together... Mm your voice becomes louder or you're, well, you you're more obvious. More. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or you become more visible. Yeah, really important, I think, yeah. because women, you know, women artists tend to disappear and we see it time and time again where you know, women artists discover it at 90, you know, and, and, yeah. and that that's that infuriates me, mm, mm, you know, that, mm. that they spend their lives working. There was one woman painter uh, in Belfast, who died maybe 20 years ago. And when they opened up her house, they found, you know, hundreds and hundreds of paintings meticulously uh, recorded and yeah. numbered and everything. Yeah. And nobody had seen them at all. I think women tend not to be too self-promoting, but also tend to maybe, you know, having children means that you're not going to have all those pub discussions and be visible outside. It definitely colours things, the yeah. Home. yeah. It does, mm. it does. Mm. And actually, that is sort of coming back to initially, you were saying, you know, COVID. COVID has been wonderful for me. Yeah, my daughter did our shopping. <laughs> <laughs> there was and loads of jobs I you didn't have to do anymore. Absolutely. Had, I led yeah. a mon monastic life and uh, I had nothing to do but paint. It was it was completely wonderful. My head just uh, t I, I went on a journey that I'm so grateful for. You know? it actually, sounds brilliant. like heaven. <laughs> it was, and I didn't know that. I mean, I'm not. Uh, people who know me sort of laugh when I say I'm not much of a housekeeper. I'm really not. Uh, <laughs> so it's not that I have concerns that way. And yet, there's a part of I let all that go during COVID and. Uh, I think a yeah. lot of people let go yeah. of a lot of the yeah. nonsense yeah. that they carry yeah. on with. Like you, yeah. you just really begin to see what's important here. Indeed. Um so <laughs> that that's always a good thing. What do you hope that Nikolaka will achieve for the greater feminist community or for the greater art world or I suppose greater visibility for mm. older women artists and respect, uh, maybe. And that the next doctor doesn't ask me if I find it relaxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elena, best to look okay. with the exhibition and everything going yeah. forward because I'm, I'm sure, sure this is just the beginning of the yeah. Carlica and yeah. that we'll be hearing an awful lot more about you in the coming well, year. I, so I, I think <laughs> probably yeah. well. And the other thing is, the few people I've I've told this is happening. You know, they've all sort of I can see real art, not virtual. You know, that's it's it, just a, it, the first. It. I think it and it's very it exciting and very empowering that you would all come together and you know yeah. put this on yeah. and it's just brilliant. We're meeting for the first time. We're having a picnic together. Just the, just the I think it's six just of the us that oh, are fabulous. Are, yeah, not everyone uh, having a picnic. You know, and it, it's <laughs> just just so lovely to see each other. <laughs> I know it's brilliant. It's yeah, exciting. Yeah, you're right. We have formed a community. And yeah, it's a good one. that's great. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. Those toys yeah. will, will last and last, and it's just it's Indeed. wonderful to see. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Um, thanks okay. for your time, Helen, and um, best of luck with everything. Thank you. Gerda, it's really, really good to have you here at South Tipperary Art Centre. You're arriving today with your beautiful work. We're so impressed. Gerda, what has been your experience of being part of the collective Nikailaka over the last year, shall we say, really? And how do you think it has affected your, I suppose, COVID experience? It must have been a really helpful outlet in many ways. Indeed, it was a very helpful outlet. This this focus on uh, the, the exhibitions which were coming up. But not only that, we first, we, we stayed for 
four weeks in Berlin Glen. Mm. This was the first time we as a collective came together and we, we all distanced before happened, but we were there for a few weeks, so close after a while we, we could be together. And uh, an amazing thing was we didn't all know each other very well. Some mm -hmm. of us got know each other, but we just got on so well and we were just so happy to be together and also to be all in we're all in similar age, but also we all want to work and we want to work together, but we also have our separate practices. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that the whole coming back to the cocooning, it gave so much extra energy to know there are like-minded people out there. We all, we all try to renew our work. We, we, we try to we stimulate each other. And we uh, just being together with like-minded people and talking about all different topics, because that's what we did in uh, Berlin Clan. Besides working together, we also talked about our topics were also life topics, yeah. very uh, important. Uh, Catherine came up with a kind of topic every night and we talked about those things. And yeah. that was hugely important is the way you think about yourself, the way you think about yourself in the society, in the community, and the way you think about yourself as a woman and as a woman of a certain age. Mm. So all those things came up and it's so reassuring and it gives so much new energy and impetus to work and to explore more things and we're only starting so there will be a long way for us and I'm looking forward to it. So uh, I just, every day I get up and wow. I'm just dying to start working and experiment because you also influence each other. Totally, we all have yeah. different processes. Some are similar and some are different, but also that is very stimulating. The yeah. fact that you can talk about it and compare and understand each other and learn about each other. I processes. suppose it's not often that you get that opportunity to kind of immerse yourselves fully and completely into a space where the conversation is, you know, completely focused and centred on your art practice or all your different art practice or your collective art practice or whatever it might be. It sounds really exciting and I imagine you must have made um, quite deep connections with each other just even through it, um, shared experiences and all that type of thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Even after from after we were at Berlin Glen for four weeks, then we didn't see each other like this is the first day that I saw Helena when I wanted oh. to embrace her but we <laughs> <laughs> and it's just we just keep saying it's so wonderful like it's great that we have the exhibition here and that we can see real artwork I again know, know. rather than everything online because uh, like we, we, we will be showing prints we all did prints but the whole process had to be done online or by post and you know uh, actually just looking at your your own specific work that you've brought into us today like that would be a completely different experience of that work online because I think you need to to really examine it almost to see all the beautiful layers and textures and everything that are going on in there. They're so intricate and I can't imagine how much patience went into it. But even to hear yourself and Catherine talk about the process of making that drawing and how it was that you did it and, and the kind of performative element of, and people will understand this, I think, when they see the drawing, the size of it, the sheer size of it. And I could just have this vision of you hopping on all these chairs following I the lines. I couldn't reach yeah. it because it's so wide. It's, it's uh, almost two and a half meter wide. So... I had to walk with the line, but it had to be... So it was a huge concentration, all right, to Absolutely. Do. And it was great to be able to do that. And yeah. suddenly when I came, I didn't know beforehand I was going to do it. I just came in. And Berlin Glen, and we had those four weeks in front of us, which we didn't have to do any other things than think about our work and being together, but also everybody did his own practice. So I had this big wall and this space and it just I just started with this. I had the paper with me, a roll of uh, big paper. And um, I just started and finished, uh, I think, three and a half weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to start on the top, so I had to start with jumping on chairs to the top. But on the bottom, I had to have a chair, like you were sitting on an office chair, which I had to lower. Okay, and again, so I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way, yeah, and actually, in the film that's been made, that process will be visible 
Beethoven in the film, I think, yeah. yeah so it's, it, I'll be interested to see that myself to say, um, it's fabulous. Yeah, I wouldn't know how much it's real because yeah. once you're working, you don't, you forget what's around you. But it was great because we were with, with two other artists in the same studio and we all had our own area. It was a very big shed in yeah. Running Plan. And we all had our each our own kind of concentration of the yeah. work and that's something beautiful as well. I mm. I, I loved mm. coming in the shed in the morning and I just was I was focused on my work and but I could totally forget everybody else there. Yeah. Like the same with the other It kinda of reminds yeah. me of the kind of whole art college experience where you, everybody has their little space but we all go around and we kind of visit everyone else's and we talk about what they're doing. And it really sounds like it was that kind of an experience. It which... was, it was, yeah. It mm. was something. It is fantastic if you get that that you're in your 77. Oh my God, you know, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not 77, are you? Thank Well, you're looking good in it, <laughs> I have to say. I'm um, enjoying it, I'm enjoying it. It's a great age, it's yeah. a great age. So as you mentioned there, like you, you really do believe and I think it probably is the start of something great and big and yeah. it's already good but like the possibilities as to where you could all take this is just the sky's the limit I suppose what are you hoping that this will this project will communicate to the the wider art world well I hope it gives uh, people courage that uh, whatever age you are you can renew your work you your work you there's no question well artists don't retire of course yeah. in the first place but also you still can renew your work you can and you're thinking you're not set in a certain way. You, you can remain open mm. for other influences and to be playful and to have fun and to have, I mean, creative fun with, with playing with the materials and, mm. and uh, experimenting and remain open for new influences and new ideas and also share them with other people. I'm inclined to be a loner and I worked for a long time just uh, I think a lot of artists could they, probably say yeah, the same thing yeah. it just kind of goes with the territory a little bit doesn't it yeah but I suppose in that way then it's easy to become a little bit insular and maybe set in your ways or that's you know, a danger yeah, okay, yeah or have a yeah. style and maybe not be be a little bit afraid to go outside of your style or to go outside your comfort zone so a project like this is like yeah so it, it, it helps you to be open and 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 also the more confidence i mean to hear because you can be very honest with each other yeah. and to hear reactions on your work in a very honest way not to please or not to but as an, an exchange yeah and that brings the energy to it as well i suppose doesn't it yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah it's a fantastic yeah. way to work i have to say and maybe other people will take up on your your idea of going off on a residency for a, a longer period of time, maybe together in a group. Lovely. Gerda, I'm going to leave you go now because uh, I kept you long enough and I, I know you're ready to go for your picnic. I wish you all the best with the exhibition. It's absolutely Thanks lovely to have you here. Delighted <laughs> to be here. This is our first now together. So oh, it'll be brilliant. We are so absolutely delighted. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, listen now, and best of luck Thanks with it all. And Thanks a million. Thank you. And that's it for this episode of the South Tip Arts Podcast. I'm hoping to catch up with the rest of the collective to bring you some conversation from them for the next time. If you'd like to get in touch with the podcast, the email address is southtipartspodcast at gmail.com. That's southtipartspodcast at gmail.com. The Nikailaka exhibition is also available as a virtual tour, which can be accessed through our website at www.southtipartcentre.ie. Keep connected by following us on our social media, where the specific details of the symposium schedule will be announced in the coming days. Until next time, thanks for listening and take care. <laughs>